God Empowered Life with Dr. Al Teresa Good Howard, a diligent seeker of the Word of God, student of history, the generals of the faith, understanding that we're standing on their shoulders. It is now our time and our turn to do the greater works of Jesus. She's an apostle, leader of leaders, successful radio personality, speaker with John Maxwell, Les Brown, and best-selling author with Jack Canfield. Her focus is empowering and equipping the next leaders, those who are ready to be used by God, to see miracles, signs, and to the God Empowered Life. I'm Dr. Al Teresa Good Howard. It's a blessing for us to be able to get together again, to be able to go into the Word of God and to hear what the Lord has to speak. I love it that the Lord is such a great Father. He's such a great God. He is so magnificent. It's so wonderful and so mighty and so majestic. And we are so privileged to be able to have a relationship with Almighty God and have Almighty God as not just God and Creator, but also as our Father. And He is always working to give us, instruct us, to teach us, provide for us the things that we're going to need in order for us to be able to live this God-empowered life. Our omnipresent God, meaning God everywhere, present all at the same time, meaning that he is there with you, but he's also here with me. He's there with others, and no matter where we are, he is there. He's very present. He's there at the same time. He is Jehovah Shama, the Lord God, who is there wherever we need him, whenever we are there, whenever we need him to be somewhere, he is already there. He's present for us. And what does that mean to us? And why is that significant? It's significant in this, that no matter where we are, no matter time, age, state, where we are, that we are, that we can find ourselves, he is present with us at that place. He's already there even before we get there. And also, it means that even whenever you hear a word, I may minister this particular word at some point in life, at one stage or one point and at one time, and you may hear it at a whole nother time, a whole nother stage in life, but it's a very present. Because he's very present, it means that the word of God can come alive to you and be just as relevant to you right where I am and right where you are. It can be just as relevant to you if you watch this or hear this a year after this word is even given. It can be still just that lively, alive and relevant that you can utilize it. The word of God never gets old, it never gets stale, it never goes out of style, it's never not useful because it is life. The Word of God is life, it is spirit, it is life, and it comes alive. And so on today, as we get into this lively Word of God, I pray that He's going to breathe new life on you as you even hear it and listen, because the Word of God can be that fresh. As a matter of fact, there was an example that was given in the book of Exodus, and we know from Moses, being the one that God used mightily to lead his people out of bondage and slavery and all of the troubles and, and trials that they were experiencing and lead them through the wilderness on their way to the promised land. And while they were in that stage of in-between place in the wilderness, coming out of slavery, going into their promises, that it begins to speak of the bread that God provided for them. They called it manna, but it was literally bread that came that God provided for them from heaven and provided for them to be able to have the necessary food they needed to sustain them. And it sustained them throughout the wilderness and into the promised land. And it said that the bread would fall down every day, that he would give them fresh bread, fresh manna coming from heaven for them every day so that they would have their daily bread and their daily portion until they got to the sixth day. Because we know that God said on the seventh day that man was to rest from their labors and that also meant having to go out and do a lot of manual work. And so on the sixth day, God would provide for them two helpings of bread. He would give them a double 
on the sixth day so that it would provide for them on the sixth day and on the seventh day. And so I believe that even at this particular time, I'm hearing by the spirit of the Lord that even those of us right now, if there are some provisions that you're needing, if there are some things that you're in need of, whether it's financially, physically, whatever it is and however it is, I'm praying that the spirit of the living God will manifest himself on your behalf just as the spirit of God manifested himself on behalf of the children of Israel during that time and season of their lives. I believe that God is a very present help that help us in the time of trouble. Whatever we need, whenever we need, I believe he will provide for us. He will be there for us. But many times, we are having to do certain things to come to him, to even grab hold to his word, declaring his word, praying his word, believing his word, speaking his word, and then seeing his word manifest on our behalf. So I want you to begin to start thinking about and meditating on this week. God being your provider and providing for you the daily and necessary needs that you have need of right now. You may have some pressing things, some, some right now things that are needful in your life. I want you to begin to even meditate, think about what it is you need, and then begin to start praying when you go into your prayer time. Praying, not praying, oh God, help me, or oh God, would you please Come see about me or help me or please provide for me. Listen, he is our God and our Father. And he already wants to do everything that is needful for us. He wants to provide for us. And as a matter of fact, by the Spirit and in the realms of the Spirit, in the heavenlies, he's already made provision for the things that we need. But what we have to do is we have to then know the word. We have to grab hold to it, so to speak by faith in what he wants I've already made available and begin to start praying in that way. Praying not, oh God, would you help me? Oh God, I hope you do this or can you please? But knowing that he's made provision, he's already desired to do certain things. He's already made provision for those things to already be available when we need it. So then we come and we pray, Father, According to your word, I'm asking for this to manifest on my behalf. Manifest the healing that is needed. Manifest the provisions that are needed. Manifest the blessings that I need or the doors that I need open or show me where to go for the job that I need or the provisions that I need for my family or whatever the area is. We can find scriptures that we can hold on to to help us during those times of need and then be able to pray and believe God and by faith receive it to come into our possession and into our now. I believe this week that you're even going to see some things in a greater way that those provisions will begin to start manifesting the way that you need them to manifest on your behalf. Because I believe if God did certain things in the Old Testament, he did certain things in the old covenant for the people of God before Jesus Christ came. Now I believe if God did it for them, then I believe that he will manifest it and do it for us even now. Even the more because we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior made the promises and made the provisions and went through and suffered and paid the price so that we can have the right it says, to the tree of life and everything that's a part of the tree of life. So I believe provisions are a part of that. And so when he said that, that when the scriptures tell us in Exodus about him providing the bread for them every day, and he didn't want them to go out and have to do a whole lot in one day. He gave it every day, every morning, they would be able to get up and get that provision of that daily bread. I believe that is the reason why when Jesus began to start teaching the disciples how to pray, he said, pray in this way. He didn't just say, say these words, but this is a formula. This is a, 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 a process, a method of praying. This is the kind of formula he was giving us how to pray and how to begin to say certain things to God and to look for and to believe for those provisions and things to be brought to us and met for us. And he said, pray our Father, which art in heaven, 
In Matthew chapter 9, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. We're praying to the Father, which is in heaven. And we began to bless him. We began to honor him. We, we began to worship him. We began to give him thanks and give him praise. He said, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, holy, holy is your name. Hallowed is your name. Holy your name is. He said, and give us this day our daily bread. He began to even connect even what God gave and what he did for the children of Israel in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. He then began to start connecting those for us in our day and in our time and said, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, looking unto him to provide for us this day, which means this. He wants to do it every day. He wants to bring a fresh supply of what is needed for us every day. He doesn't want us to have stale bread. He didn't want it to get stale and old. He wanted it to be fresh every day. And God wants to provide for us fresh every day. But the requirement for that was, and still is, for us to spend time with him every day. To seek him every day. To go to position ourselves. See, listen, God in the Old Testament, God provided the manna, the bread from heaven. That was his part. That was the part that God played. God provided the manna. He provided the daily substance, the daily provisions. He provided the daily food that they were needed. But their part was to go out and gather it, to go out and take it in, to go out and receive from it. If they had stayed in their tents where they were, the provisions would have been there. The manna would have been there. All what they needed for their food and their substance, it would have been there. But they would not have been able to take part in it, would not have been able to partake of it, if they had have just remained in their tent and not do anything else to get it. They could have sat there and said, well, why am I hungry? I'm, I'm starving. I'm hungry. I don't have it. I, I don't have enough. I'm lacking. I'm, I'm, my, my children are in need. And we don't have it. And they could have sat there in the tent and they could have complained about it and they, they could have murmured about it and they could have thought God didn't care anything about them because they didn't have it in their possession. But when we look at it more carefully and clearly, we realize that in that example, then if they had have sat there and not gone out to take part and not gone out to get it, they would have been lacking still, but it would not have been because God did not care. And it would not have been because God did not want to provide for them or didn't provide for them. But it was that they didn't do their part in order to take possession of what God had made available to them. Their part was to have to get up and to go out to wherever God had said for them to meet him to receive the provisions that he had made available to them. What does that mean? How does that apply to us today? It can be similar for us today in many different ways, but we can apply it and we can learn from it and see how to apply it to our daily lives, how to apply it to where we are right now and what we may be experiencing right now. They had a part to play. And God had a part to play. God would always play his part. God would always provide what he said he would provide. And then we would have to do our part in going out to believe that he had provided it. Because the first thing they had to believe what God had told through Moses, his servant, and told them to do. God told Moses, Moses told the people, this is what God said to do. And if they would believe what the man of God, or the in, in, us, in our case today, even the women of God, if they would believe what God had said through his servants, they had to believe that, and then they would go and do what they were told to do. And so the part that we have to play as well is we have to hear from God. We can hear from God many different ways. We can hear from God by our time in the word of God, because the word of God is like God speaking to us. And so many times he will speak to us through the scriptures as we're reading, as we're studying the word. Many times he will lead us to a particular scripture 
or, or give a certain scripture or we'll hear someone say a certain scripture and we'll go back and read it. And that word will speak to us. It'll bring clarity to us sometimes. It will give us direction sometimes. And so he can speak to us that way. But also we can even spend time in prayer. And sometimes in prayer. Then God will then speak to us. Speak into our spirit man. Our spirit man will be in connection and communion with the spirit of God. Because it's a spiritual thing. And he'll speak with us and speak to us even that way. And then, of course, he can also speak to us through other people. That's the reason why he has given us leaders and people that are our leaders, spiritual leaders that he will give unto us. And teachers and instructors and things that can also share different things of the scriptures or share as we do prophetically sometimes. Give you a word or share some things that we're hearing. God speaking by the Spirit. And we'll speak those things to you, and, and that will give you words from God. You can hear words from God from other people as well that may not be ministers or just someone maybe sharing some things that they heard. So these are different ways that we can hear from God. But the, the, the whole, the, what I want us to understand and to see is that God is speaking. God always is speaking and wanting to give us instruction and give us direction because he understands and he wants us to understand that we have a part to play and he has a part to play. And as we both play, do what we're called to do, do what we need to do, then the things that are needed will be able to manifest. And just like in that example of the daily bread, as they would go out and go believe that word, go out to where God said for them to go, the manna, the provision, the bread would be there and available to them. And they were to take the portion that they and their family needed, and that would sustain them. And each day, they would have to do that until the sixth day, and then he would give them the double portion to last them for those two days. And so, even so now, it was representative of us as having a fresh relationship, a daily relationship with the Father, a daily relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a daily communing and conversation and spending time with the Lord. And so when Jesus taught us, pray for our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is this day. Give us, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread that your kingdom will be able to manifest on the earth. That your kingdom, the, the connection with the kingdom of God, the spiritual realm, the heavenly realm, the things that are already provided in the realm of the spirit, in the heavenly realm, will then be able to be manifested on our earth just like there are manifestations in heaven. Everything that those that are in the heavenlies would need, they are already provided. Everything that God had created, Everything that God has made that has available in himself is available to those of us that have now become the sons and daughters of God through Christ Jesus. And they are now available to us. We are on the earth. He's in the heavenlies. The provisions are in heaven. So what I mean is this. Remember the scripture that Apostle Paul it wasn't a written scripture at the time, but it's written for us now. He told them, he taught them, and then it was written down so that we would now have it, so that we can read it, and we can have it to say it as well. He said in Philippians 4 and 19, my God, he began to pray a prayer for those that would help him in the ministry, for those that helped sow seeds into his life, to help him be able to continue to do the work that God had called him to do and have finances to come into his life to help provide for him financially as well as to help provide for him in the ministry that God had called him to. He began to say of those who had been sowing into his life and, and ministry unto him financially. He then prayed, my part is, see, their part was to sow into his life and to be a blessing into his life. His part was to sow into their lives the word of God to be a blessing into their lives that the word of God would then be able to make the difference and cause their lives to be able to be formed and developed that they could be all that God called them to be and walk out what God called them to be. 
And so he was saying that there is that connection, there is that partnership, that I give what God has given me to give out to you in the realm of the spirit, by the way of the spiritual things. These are the gifts that God has given me, the word of God, and put the anointing upon me to teach you how to walk out the word of God and to teach you how to live the life that God has called you to live to be able to do the things that God has called you to do, to raise you up, to be who God has called you to be. And then the people that he was sent to, that he had been called to, that he was pouring his life into, that he was pouring the ministry into, that he was given of the word of God that God had placed on the inside of him to give, he was pouring those into them. And so that was his responsibility. And their responsibility then came back to be a partaker in his life and to sow back into his life financially because that was their part. That was the part that he would need so that he could do the work because in the scriptures have it to be so that many times in full-time ministry, it is a responsibility of those in full-time ministry to have to spend their time seeking the Lord on behalf of those that God will give them to and that God will call them to. And so it would be difficult for them to have to work a full-time job and then try to seek the Lord and do the things that will be needful. So God set up a system that those that he would call and he would call into full-time ministry, then they were to live on and live by the offerings and the things that would come into their lives from those that they would be pouring their life into and pouring the word into and those that they would be teaching and those that they would be imparting into. And then those that were receiving from them of the spiritual things, of the word of God, of the prayers that they would pray on their behalf, of the laying on of hands and the declarations that they would be given unto them, those that was receiving from them and, and they had monies coming in, they would be the ones to go out and work the jobs and do the things, then they were to give a portion to the servant of God that was called, they were called to. And so then it would work together and benefit. And so Paul said unto them in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, he said it specifically for those who had been sowing into his life, partnering with him in the ministry and being a blessing to him. Then he said, I pray that then my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus because you are being a blessing to me, then it is my responsibility as a leader, as a person of God to then pray for you because there is a connection and there is a certain anointing that God calls and place on those that he called into the ministry and God then utilized them not only to teach and to minister and to lead the people, but also an anointing that God will hear the prayers that they pray, not only for themselves, but especially even the more for those that he, they have been called to. And so Paul would pray those prayers and would pray the prayers on behalf of those that he was called to. And he began to pray that my God shall supply your needs. Not according to your pocketbook or your finances or your income or your job or wherever it may come from. And it can come those ways because God can bless us to, to work the jobs and to have the monies coming in many different ways and many different forms. But he's saying those things are good and those are ways that they come. But I'm praying that the blessing of you to have those things coming in will come from heaven because heaven has an unlimited supply. And so he prayed that my God will supply your needs according to his riches that are in glory by Christ Jesus. And they made way, they came through because of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm even praying that for each and every one of you and especially those of you that God has called me to just as those that God had called Apostle Paul to. Those that had called to come alongside and partner with Apostle Paul to be able to help bring provisions for his life that he would be able to continue to focus on doing the work of God and to benefit the ministry that God has called. Also, I am praying for those of you that God is calling me to and calling to me. Those of you that are identifying and that understand that God has called 
me to be able to be a blessing into your life, to be able to help you in the things that God has called you into, to help you, your life, your family, your children, your jobs, your businesses, whatever way the word of God is able to help us in every area that we will have need of, in every area we do need at some point. But the word of God will be able to help you. And God has called me to be able to help those and to impart the word of God and to impart the things of God by the spirit of the living God into those that he called me to, that you will be able to be blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ and through the ministry in which he has called me to be able to do. And those of you that feel that connection, that hear that connection, that sense that connection, I encourage you. We appreciate those of you partnering with us, even helping us be able to expand and take care of the things of the ministry, to be able to do the things that God has called us to do, to be able to reach out further, to be able to reach out more, to be able to do more in the kingdom of God is such a time as this and it takes finances it takes a lot of things it takes a lot of people sometimes to be able to help do different things and finances are needful and necessary and so those of you that will partner with us. We are praying for you. We are praying for you continually. We are praying that the Lord, as he will minister the word of God to us, that we'll be able to minister what you will have need of. And then we thank God for those of you that will assist us financially to continue to do the work of God. We're working it together. And not just as we're working it together, but we're also working it together with the Lord Jesus Christ. And right here, as before we close out for today, for those of you that would desire to be a part of it, we appreciate it. We need those of you that will partner with us. And we appreciate, we understand this how it works, that, that he would have, have need of us as the people of God to deliver the word, to provide, and then we would have need of you to be able to help us in doing the work of God and continuing to do the work of God, all of us working together. And as I can't say to the hand, I have no need of you, but we have need of one another. And if God is calling you to us, we understand there are many people that are ministering, there are many broadcasts, there are many things, and many ones that are out there in all kinds of forms. But I believe that there are some that God will call to, to connect together, that God called to do works together. They, got, they even call to even partner together. And so we encourage you, if you would send the seed through Cash App, dollar sign Dr. Al Teresa, dollar sign Dr. Al Teresa, or through Zelle, through Pastor Al Teresa at gmail.com. We appreciate every seed being sown, and we have more, so much of the Word of God. Whether you're able to sow or not, we're going to give the Word of God and the things that God would have us to give in the realm of the spirit into your natural that you will see the manifestations that God would have for you. Thank you so much for watching and listening and being a part of this God empowered life work and assignment that God has called us to continue to be blessed, continue to grow and develop. And remember Jesus is Lord. God Empowered Life with Dr. Al Teresa Good Howard, a diligent seeker of the Word of God, student of history, the generals of the faith, understanding that we're standing on their shoulders. It is now our time and our turn to do the greater works of Jesus. She's an apostle, leader of leaders, successful radio personality, speaker with John Maxwell, Les Brown, and best-selling author with Jack Canfield. Her focus is empowering and equipping the next leaders, those who are ready to be used by God to see miracles, signs, and wonders.